Hey, welcome back. We're in Exodus chapter 12 today, verses 21 and 22. Here they are. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and take for yourselves lambs according to your families and slay the Passover lamb. You shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood which is in the basin and apply some of the blood that is in the basin to the lintel and the two doorposts. And none of you shall go outside the door of his house until morning. So the command to slay the Passover was to each leader of each household. Now pay attention to this. This was always the man because in God's creation order, he designed the family relation such that, and you might find this very hard to hear. So, but anyway, we have to say it. God designed things so that the man was essentially to lead and the woman was essentially to follow. Now, I want you to notice the responsibility was given to the male. And so-called emancipated women really are, are basically leaderless women. And yet, even as we say that, I've got to make sure everybody's angry here. Even as we say this, we also have to recognize what? That the world around us today has, has pretty effectively demasculinized most of the males. So uh, I feel the sorriest for, uh, for you ladies out there. If you're looking for a godly man to be a spiritual leader for you and your family, and uh, yeah, your pickings are a little bit slim these days. Us men, we've got we've to learn all over again. A lot of us have never been taught and our, maybe our, in some cases our own uh, father, our own parent can't teach us how because we were raised by our mother instead of our father or we were raised by a father who, who really didn't know how to pass anything on to us spiritually. So a lot of us wind up, we have to actually learn how to be spiritual men. So, yeah, a lot of us are failing grievously. And so a key task for men in this age is to learn how to actually be spiritual men. We need to discover how to lead all over again. Or maybe we've never known how to lead. We don't need a lot of help learning how to dictate or how to be authoritarian, but we need help in learning how to lead. Leading is different than forcing and dictating. So remember, there were many priests in Israel, but remember, God called in this case, notice it very plainly in the text, he called the men to be effectively to act as the priests. Now, of course, this is not long before, but it is before the Le Levitical priesthood. So that's a piece of the picture too. And it's also true that all believers are called to a, a priesthood in a sense. All of us are called to certain priestly kinds of duties and things. And yet God lays the responsibility for spiritual leading. He lays it on the man. And it's true, if the men are totally out to lunch, the woman will have to lead spiritually. But notice in our text, you, we've read it the last few days, it was the male of the family, the male leader, he was to slay the Passover lamb. He was to apply the blood to the doorpost. The, the woman would prepare the meal there was work for everybody in the family to do. Each one had their part. Now, one of the more interesting pieces that we really haven't discussed until now is this part of the command we read today, that no one is to go outside the door until morning. That's kind of an interesting piece. Now, this is a command, so this isn't just, you know, an option here. So from the time that the Passover was slain and they ate it early in the, relatively early in the evening, they were to go in, they were to be in their home and not come out they had to be in before the death angel comes by at about midnight. That's the timing we're given. And from that time until morning, they're not to come out. They are commanded very plainly, do not go out. So in contemporary terms, you know, how would we apply this? So when we've received the seal of God, and when Jesus is, is basically our great high priest, remember the Levitical priests, we haven't really studied this, but the Levitical priests are representing, in a sense, Jesus, the ultimate great high priest. If you read the book of Hebrews, you'll see a lot of these pieces uh, pull together for you. Read in Hebrews 8 and all through the book of Hebrews. Jesus is our great high priest. So in the Day of Atonement, we are to stand uh, closely to Jesus Remember, back in Leviticus 16, you have the Day of Atonement ritual marked out, Yom Kippur. And when you come down to verse 29, 28, I think it's 29 there, what do we find? That uh, the people were to humble themselves 
be in the sight of the Lord. They were uh, this was, they weren't having a big barbecue out there. Uh, they, everybody was very, there was a lot of solemnity going on. Hey, the high priest is making atonement for the sins of Israel. Uh, people were had a great solemnity. They were thinking about their own uh, connection to God. They were thinking and praying for their high priest and for themselves. There was a very great solemnity going on throughout the camp as atonement was being made and applied to Israel. Today, what's our part? Today, we are living in a pretty solemn time. This isn't really a time for, for carnivals and, and, and festivals and yippy-dippy, fun, fun, fun. Uh, we're not against fun. I'm for joy. This is a good time to draw very close to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this, this, and we can do that joyfully. So God doesn't call us to gloom, but he, he does call us to, uh, to have, have an awakeness to the time, you know, a true wokeness, uh, to be awake to the time, the hours in which we live, which are solemn as we ap approach the very close of this part of human experience when Jesus is going to come again. So may God bless us as we seek to be faithful to him living in this our day. Uh, this is a very solemn time that we're living in. We're living in a time uh, of, of judgment and a time when God is getting very ready to pour out upon us great, great blessings. I hope we're ready for those.